What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. Today, we're talking about the day my mother died. Well, we're talking about that, and we're talking about baptism. But let's talk about the day my mother died, and, and you'll see why I want to use that to talk about baptism. So... Um, five years ago today, my mom died. Uh, she died of pancreatic cancer, was it? Yes, I think so. Um, it was five years ago today. Yesterday would have been her 62nd birthday, so she had her birthday and then she died the next day. Now, I had seen her a few days before she died. I brought my kids, uh, and she was up and she was talking, and I was like, you know what, this is it. This is how I'm gonna choose to remember my mother in her last moments. I'm not gonna come see her anymore. Uh, this is it. This is, this is the last lasting image that I want to have of her. Five years ago this morning, uh, I woke up to a phone call and was, I don't remember which, it was one of my sisters, uh, and she had said, uh, it's happening today, and you're the only child that's not here. And they didn't, like, pressure me to go, they were just kind of letting me know, hey, we're all here, um, so what, what, whatever you want. And I decided at that point, if all the other siblings are there, uh, mom should die with all of her children. <clears throat> Except for, of course, my older brother, John, who had already uh, passed into glory when he lost his battle with leukemia. Although nobody who dies in the Lord ever loses the battle to cancer. So all of us were there except for John, but she would be seeing him later that day anyways. So we all go. Uh, I get there and we're all there. And it was this roller coaster of emotions. Uh, it was quiet at first. We didn't know what to do. Uh, it was awkward because uh, in regular intervals, we had to click a button to give her morphine. Uh, and that was awkward because my mom had spent so many years of her life devoted to recovery from drug and alcohol addiction that it seemed awful at the end to just dope her up full of drugs. But it, it was at that point, it was the most merciful thing that we could do. Uh, but the kind of the stark realization that this woman spent her entire life as a recovering addict and now we're pumping her full of drugs, there's no dignity here. And so the, all of the thoughts that we had back and forth and this being the second deathbed that I had sat by because um, I was at my brother's deathbed, instilled in my mind there's no dignity in death. I mean, really, there is no dignity. I mean, we can pray, and, you know, I certainly did pray that day, and I'll show you the prayer, um, but praying for a blessed end, yeah, and we do that, but kind of when that moment comes, there's still no dignity in it. I mean, there was. She was surrounded by uh, her her husband. She was surrounded by her children, um, and, she, you know, she wasn't in pain, And but that whole day was just a roller coaster of quiet contemplation sadness, crying, which would for some odd reason burst out uh, with laughter, uh, uncontrollable laughter, and then kind of that awkward quietness again. Uh, and it was very intense to be there, and it took all day. And we were there, and she was straining to breathe and gargling, and, and it was getting worse, and we were just waiting for this to happen. Uh, and then... Later, the, I mean, the pastor had come by, uh, he sang a few hymns, he shared some scripture with us. That was incredibly great. Uh, I remember there was a point when everybody else left to go, I think it was go get lunch, and I stayed with her, um, and I sang hymns to her uh, while she was there. I don't know if she could hear me or not, but, you know, go, go to your end uh, with the praises of the Lord. If not on your lips, then in your ears was my mentality. So that was a beautiful moment that I got to share with my mother. Uh, and then that evening, <clears throat> it happened. I think we had reached, you know, because it was back and forth, it was back and forth, it was quiet, it was sadness, it was laughter. And I think we were just kind of coming down off of the laughter. And we noticed, we looked over at my mom, and she was looking at something on the ceiling. She had been non-responsive, just been laying there completely just oblivious to the world, and now her focus was fixed on something uh, on the ceiling, and she died. 
And that was it. Uh, we left the room. The nurse came in <clears throat> to the hospice nurse came in to uh, make sure that she was dead. Her husband went in to be there. Uh, they kind of repositioned the body a little bit before we could go in and say goodbye. And then, you know, the, the, they came to pick her up and go prepare her for her funeral and for burial. What does all this have to do with baptism, Ryan? Well, word had gotten out to my family, my mainline American Protestant evangelical family, that before she died, she stared at something intently at the ceiling. <clears throat> I didn't put much faith in it. I didn't even really think about it much. It was just something that happened when she died. I didn't put much stock in it. But the more certain members of my family talked about it, oh, she saw Jesus, she saw the angels coming for her, she saw her son John waiting for her. There's no proof of that. Is it a distinct possibility that she saw with her living eyes the Lord descending with his angels to come and bear her soul to wait in paradise for the resurrection? Yes, that's a distinct possibility. Do we have any definitive proof of it? No. But this thing that she did before she died in the, the minds of some of my family members turned into like the proof that she was saved. And that's when I really got to thinking about it. And I'm like, I know without any doubt that my mother is in heaven with the Lord, with her son, waiting for the resurrection, waiting for the rest of us, waiting uh, before the altar of the Lord with all the saints, crying out, how long, O Lord? She's waiting in paradise for the resurrection. I know that. But why do I know that? Do I base that on this subjective experience that could have been her seeing the Lord before she died? Or it could have been her oxygen-deprived brain flickering all sorts of whatever in front of her as she died? I don't know. There's a strong case for both. I don't know what happened, but I know where she is because she is baptized. Because she has been sanctified by the washing of water with the word, as Ephesians puts it, as, as Romans puts it, she was buried with Christ into his death by baptism and raised with him to newness of life. Uh, as Ti the book of Titus puts it, the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Uh, as Peter put it, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. You will receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, or Jesus said, make disciples by baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, when we look at the scriptures, the verses that are actually about baptism, they say much more about what baptism actually is than what the average evangelical will do. Look at verses that are not about baptism to determine what baptism is. Baptism is a washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit. It is Jesus' work of sanctifying his church by the washing of water with the word. It is uh, an act that brings the forgiveness of sins, or as Peter put in his epistle, baptism now saves you. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a pledge from God to you that you have a good conscience. I knew that my mother was in heaven and my hope, my assurance, my foundation of my faith that my mother was in heaven was not on a subjective experience that I witnessed when I was at her deathbed. The proof that I had that my mother was in heaven, the foundation of my faith, was the word and promises of God. That's, and that, <clears throat> sorry, that um, kind of helped me realize how far I had come because I used to be like a lot of the members of my family, mainline American Protestants and believing and shifting my beliefs with the winds of heretical chains and chants. Uh, and putting my trust in anything I'll, except for the objective word of God and what it means in, in plain language. And it showed me how far I had come that in that moment, my brain could not even register, oh my goodness, mom must be seeing Jesus. My brain was, this is death. And then later contemplation on God's word assured me that my mother was in heaven. And uh, the blessed timing that the Lord had granted to my mother to die, as you can still see, during the Easter season. 
So, when we get to her funeral, the first thing the pastor said was, Christ is risen. And the congregation responded, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. What a beautiful, beautiful statement of faith to make at something uh, that is otherwise as sad as a funeral. And so, and, and did I cry? Of course I cried. Of course I cried at my mom's funeral. We all cried. We were all sad that she was gone. We were all terribly upset, and we were going to miss her. And death is not natural. It is not a part of God's plan. And we knew that this wrenching away of our mother's soul from her flesh, leaving her flesh an empty shell that would rot in the ground until the resurrection, but we did not mourn like those who have no hope. And mourning... Mourning the death of a loved one is a good Christian work. It is a good work that Christians do when they mourn the death of a loved one. Jesus mourned the death of Lazarus, and not for any of the silly reasons that anyone ever uh, postulated about why Jesus would cry when Lazarus died. Jesus was genuinely sad that Lazarus had died. It's upsetting, especially to God. This is not how he intended his creation to be. He has restored it. He has conquered death by his death. Christ took our uh, punishment in his place and he took our death upon himself. And now our death will be as hollow as his empty tomb. Our death is just a door to eternity. And heaven, while not permanent, is certainly a hope that we can look forward to to be with the Lord in heaven, but the ultimate hope of the Christian and the ultimate hope that I have uh, watching family members die like my brother and my mother, the ultimate hope that I have as a Christian is not that I will one day join them in heaven, but that one day later we will be raised in our bodies to newness of life. So it's a bittersweet day reflecting on my mom's death, but it's also a day to reflect on the word of God and to rest our hope and our faith in his sure promises. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of 1517 Films. I look forward to speaking with you again, and until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.